Dave, uh, you talk about you know making sure you take time for your health, making sure you take time for the important things in your life. And I only bring that up because you're everywhere, right? So yeah. when you look at your calendar, I get tired reading it sometimes. And uh, But you always get back to family, health, and the important things in your life, right? Yeah. I th- oh, good. But So I, I want to bring that up because Urban Meyer is retiring again. I don't know if it's health-related, but uh, that's always one of the things he at least cites when these things come up. And uh, I want your opinion on that. Yeah, he does have a cyst on his brain that supposedly causes severe headaches upon having stress. And I can't think of a more stressful year, let alone a more stressful job, than being the head coach of Ohio State Buckeyes in losing one game, uh, you know, and being that close to the the championship. So, uh, what what I think is interesting is no matter how successful you are, and all the things you get to do, the opportunities that exist in your life, whether you're an athlete, a celebrity, an entertainer, a key CEO, or a head football coach, dream jobs, as they say. There comes a point in your life where you realize, holy crap, if I'm not here, my family doesn't matter. <laughs> my business doesn't matter. My brand, my whatever it does, it matter. And so uh, I think it's really important for people to take note of whether or not Urban Meyer has severe headaches every time he gets stressed or not. Just take note to what's important in life, which is if you're not happy and healthy, nothing else matters. I just recently told my wife, you know, was, was leaving. I said, well, you know, I do prioritize my workouts over my family. And she's like, gave me the screw. Like, are, are you kidding? This isn't what you teach. I go, it's exactly what I teach. Because if I don't get to my workout, I, I know I'm supposed to spend time with my eight-year-old, which means I better stretch myself that day to still have time for my eight-year-old son to play on the weekend. But I'm going to do my workout first before anything else. Because if I'm not here, what good am I to my eight-year-old? And that's a good point that I think uh, sometimes gets lost when people talk about the schedule and the really the capacity that one person might have. You talk about quarterbacks and use the term processing speed, which you picked up from Warren Moon, who's a great person to learn from when it comes to talking about quarterbacks and business, as it turns out, right? Not too bad in that area as well. But um, when you talk about quarterbacks being the the senator or the president of their team, right? How Talk about the CEO and the quarterback and how they're similar as far as processing speed because I often get when and I've got a, a lot of balls in the air maybe not as many as you but I, I'm involved in a lot of things and I often get questioned about how do you do this this and this and it's always I can car- compartmentalize and I can process right and I can usually do those quicker than most but I think you're at another level of it so share that a little bit and it takes practice right I think anyone that's you know playing esports today and plays 12 to 16 hours they're going to process that game faster right you, it's the cellular input that goes from the conscious into the subconscious neural pathways are formed that create that processing speed and the, if you've seen and read books like outliers you know 10,000 sure. reputations so if you think about life in the in the form of activity that in a linear time frame we have 24 hours and that there's just activity during that 24 hours there's no work and there's no play. There's activities that you get paid for and activities you don't get paid for. You get activities that increase your health. You have activities that decrease your health. And I think that you mentioned some of the skills that you've learned because you have an extraordinary processing speed because you've had practice. You've been in business a long time. You've owned businesses. You've been in conflicts with businesses and happiness with business and thousands of people that are relying on you and all these things. If you've never had that, how can you process the same way you play golf? And and the one thing I love about golf, it's like being a quarterback in the NFL. There is no athlete in the world that can pick up a golf club for the very first time. You give them the best set in the world. You give them the best course in the world, the best balls in the world, all the best equipment in the world. And you put them on the tee box for the very first time, and they have no chance, zero, of breaking 100. Of breaking 100. Right. The greatest athlete in the world. Pick whoever you want to say has the best hand-eye coordination, but if they've never played that before. And so that's what they don't understand about being a CEO. You can't just put somebody in to run a business. And I deal with entrepreneurs a lot and innovators and say, okay, tear up (laughs) and expect them to break 100. Right. So let's bring it back to Urban Meyer. Okay. So – um, you see a lot, if you, especially if you watch Sunday Night Football, uh, 
you know, Chris Collinsworth talks about the percentages where, you know, if they go for it here, they have a 13% chance to win. If they do nothing, they have a 22% chance. And you start breaking down all of these minute details that need to be made in the moment decisions, right? So when those things happen and you have a person like Urban Meyer has been incredibly successful, especially at Ohio State, and this is, comes on the heels of Florida. <laughs> He's 82-9 and nine there. He's won seven consecutive titles. And stress and the ability to make those decisions and the ability to process, I kind of get it, right? Like, you know, there's a lot of mo- key moments in every single game, maybe not when you're up 55 to 10, but in, in a lot of those games. And the stress level associated with that position, like you said, it's got to be one of the most stressful positions in the world, you make a really good point. It is one of the most stressful positions because of so many people relying and watching you, right? With their emotions attached, right? People, when you deal with your children, high pressure. When you deal with the, this, the, these alumni, it's high pressure. And, and don't discount the games that are fifty-five to five or, or four, right, or whatever the scores are, because here's the problem with those games as far as stress: <laughs> you put more pressure on yourself because you can't lose those. Because what happens is if you end up losing the Purdue game by 21, you don't make the national championship series. And so, and he's been around a long time and he knows that. So what, what happens? You're stress, 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 stress all the way up. Then in the second half, when you're up 45 to seven, you get a nice little day and a half break, (laughs) right? From stress. Right. And then no matter who you're playing, it's just what degree of stress are you going to have? Well, and the thing that I think people forget when they start putting, you know, uniforms out there, right? It's Ohio State and Michigan. It's a bunch of 20-year-olds playing against each other. If that. Right? That <laughs> that might have a girlfriend that broke up with them that week or may have a test that they bombed or, right. or a, a or number of Or their mom's things. mad at them. Right. So <laughs> when you start dealing with the management of, of people that are at that age, right, it's it's a special skill. Oh, gosh, and now because of the way uh, the, the administrative responsibilities are, I used this analogy last night. I was with uh, Ed Milet and Dean Graziosi, pretty intelligent people, and I brought up the fact, because they were talking about this pressure, I said, imagine if they told you as a professor, this is why, because they asked if I would like to be a head coach someday, right, because I can recruit and you know manage the greatest coaches, but think about this. If I was just a teacher, and I, you know, I'm an adjunct professor at UCI Law School, if they told me in my small class, you're going to be responsible for these young people for everything that they do inside the classroom, outside the classroom, and you should you should know what they're doing because you're the head coach. Now take that with a hundred and some football players, and you're supposed to know every not only them though, but now your coaches. You got to know what they're doing in their personal life, and you and you're responsible for all of this. Forget the game pressure. I don't want that responsibility. And that's why Urban Meyer's, you know, forget the cyst in his brain and pressure. I think he's going to the NFL because these NFL coaches, right, uh, are not responsible for Hunt. Right. Kareem Hunt, you know, he yeah. he does something that's not looking good for Kareem Hunt right now. Right, as far as he's, the video shows. <laughs> he's fired immediately, right? He oh, no longer has a job. Yeah, in college. And, and no or one at least suspended is, for three games. And no one else is even touching him right now. But in... In college, that somehow becomes Urban Meyer's fault. That becomes a black eye on the organization of Ohio State. If something like that were to happen, I get getting away from it. But I also, out of the other side of my mouth, will say, if you have college dialed, right, like Nick Saban seems to have college dialed, I don't think there's a better job in the world. When Steve Sprayer was at Florida, I don't think he ever bought a meal in that town, right? Oh, well, that's the positive side of it. But I don't think it's the greatest job in the world. If you look at the greatest coaches, Belichick and Saban, and they look stressed. (laughs) They they don't look. They don't glow. You know. You know. Look at you know Tony Gonzalez. Pete Carroll's the only guy can pull that off. Yeah, he does too. (laughs) And he he ages well. Great point. I apologize, but you know I'd rather be Tony Gonzalez because those guys on you know James Brown and Tony, all these guys, like even Terry Bradshaw, he looks better today than he did ten years ago. He looks the same as he did ten years ago, which (laughs) which is better by everybody else's standards. Right. 